Hey, and welcome to my, my talk. I'm, I'm happy to be here. It's a privilege. And I will talk today a bit about mashups. First, a few words about myself. So currently, I work at IBM in the Silicon Valley lab down in, in San Jose as IBM solutions architect. And in this role, most of my time I spend with customers and doing POCs, proof of concepts with them around mashups. So if a customer comes in and says they want to learn more about mashups or they know already something, and they have an idea how they could apply mashups in their enterprise, then we jump in and help them gathering their ideas and then coming up um, with a solution and presenting it to them. Or then when a uh, customer bought it and they need further assistance right on the beginning, then we would jump in as well and, and help them out. So we have a few folks in, in our team that always um, travel around um, across the US. But my role is more than on the back end, um, supporting them and really creating some mashups. And I think with this work that I'm doing, I think I can give you quite some insights how mashups are really used in the enterprise and why um, they are important for enterprises and how they are used and what they are looking for and, and what, they, what they are trying to do with it. The second part of my role is I'm, I'm an um, advanced technology engineer. So I work quite a bit with research as well. So look at ideas that they have, at prototypes that they have, and then see how they would fit into our products. And in this role, I spend quite a bit of time um, this year because I worked with a, with a team in the Almedin Research Lab and they developed some um, cool new stuff around information extraction. So they basically look at text and then just out of plain text, they are able to extract information like an address or, or a phone number or they would find famous people and then they would annotate um, this information and we actually implemented um, part of this solution into the next version of, of the mashup center where you will see some screens later on. And I was doing quite a bit of this implementation as well. But let's get started. So here a quick overview of what, what um, I had in mind um, presenting to you today. So first, a quick introduction. Um, what is a mashup? Then why mashups in the enterprise? Then what are good mashups made of? And I came up with this because, I, as I said before, I, I do a lot with customers. And there's maybe a surprise behind it, also something I didn't know a while back, where customers really focus on and to create a good mashup is what you really need. Then I will talk about the architecture of mashups, how they usually um, laid out for, from an architecture standpoint. And then at the end, and this will be, or in the middle, I would say, um, I start with mashup showcases, because I find the best way to bring across um, what mashups are used for and why they are in the enterprise is when I show you quite a few examples. So I have at least, I think, 10 to 20 examples. And I hope I will not lose your interest throughout the talk. But if I do, then you can at least be amused by my funny German accent. <laughs> OK, so all of us, we live on this beautiful world. And let's say you live in Boulder, Colorado. Then you have um, nice mountains, nice lakes, and most likely throughout the winter, a lot of snow. So what do you do with the snow? You go skiing, right? <laughs> and since you have a lot of young guys here, then you do maybe some skateboarding as well. And here you go. You have your first mashups. You have snowboarding. Another mashup since, uh, <laughs> since the flu season starts now would be maybe one of those, right? So you don't need to carry your tissues around in your pocket anymore. Or if you like to play the guitar and like to drink a beer from time to time, then this would be another possible mashup that you would be interested in. But let's get serious. So what, what are mashups? And for me, looking into this mashup area since a long time, the really first mashup, I think, and a lot of people would agree that really, really hit the road was um, um, housingmaps.com. And it took um, the rental office set out on Craigslist and then mapped it, um, like plotted it on a map so that you could see where in the city, in a specific city, you had um, free rooms and what they would cost. And then a company called Silo, they took it way to the next level. They, they took this idea of having a map and displaying information there for the whole housing market. So if you go today to Silo.com, and, and over time, and I have really watched this, they extended it more and more. In the beginning, you would just, like housing maps did, you would see a map and then um, 
you would see the houses that are available, and you would see the price, and then you would see how many bedrooms, like the main facts about the house. But now you, you say mashed up another mashup in, in Zillow called walkable.com, um, where you can see for each house how walkable it is and what they mean with walkable is and how close it is to the next supermarket, how close it is to the next um, park. So it really involved and it took um, data from different sources and blotted it in a nice usable interface. And what I just said is exactly what mashups are about. You take information from different sources and then you mash them together so that you get new insights and information and then you present it in a really nice consumable way. Another mashup that most likely all of you know um, is iGoogle. And here they took um, the idea of having a, a start page, a home page to the next level so that you can just take your widgets, your information that it's important for you. Maybe you can even write your own gadget and then plot it um, on, on a page and make it your, your own home page. And here again, you empower the end user to exactly do what they want and what they need. My home page may look totally different than your home page, but both are mashups. And this is the key point also of mashups that you adjust it to your need. And these two examples here that, that are public, we will see how they also translates and into enterprises and why enterprises also jumped on it because they saw same, the same need also for the enterprise and they saw that it's the same concept that is available publicly and that people had from Zillow or for housing map would also help them to solve um, their business problems. A second part um, of what a mashup is, is, is the data portion. So what we, the two examples I just showed you, they were really focused on the presentation layer. But that's really not it. For good mashups, what you really need is good, interesting data. So most of the time when people think about mashups, they think about this nice interface where different information comes together. Where not so many, pe where not so many people think about right away is where does the data come from? And to create good mashups, you need also a platform to get this data from different sources, transform it, pick the data that you really want, change it into a different format so that you can reuse it in, in a widget or in a different application, and then publish um, this new information that um, has multiple data sources in it. And here you see three examples. One, um, I think maybe you have looked at it or everybody can look at it, it's Yahoo Pipes. Um, really well done that allows you to create your own feeds and, and mash feeds up and, and transform them. One is Check B Presto. It's another um, commercial product. And here on the, on the left hand side, you, you see a, a screenshot of, of the IBM Mashup Center. It's a data mashup builder where you can see different sources and how you can mash up data. If you have any questions, Throughout my talk, please feel free to, to stop me right away. I will take some, I will save some time for the end, but if you have any questions, I think it's always good to, to ask them right away. So let's move on to the second part. Why mashups in the enterprise? So the interest in mashups is there since a while and it's growing. And here on this page, um, I want to bring four points across. So on the top, if, on the top left, if you read this quote, what it basically says is the whole idea of mashups came out of the Web 2.0 initiative that you basically enable um, end users and make it way more user friendly. And then here's the, the lower left part says, and all the people, and this was done by a study in January 2007, so quite a bit um, back, but I will come back to this date and show us a trend in, in the next slide. But what you see here is that at people that looked at um, Web 2.0 and said that they are interested in Web 2.0, most of them said that they plan to use mashups. So here, 42% um, percent, um, of all people who responded said that they would have an interest in, in using mashups. Here on the lower right side, you, it explains why people want to look into mashups, because mashups are seen as an integration part between IT and end users. So IT provides the basis for end users to create their mashups, and then end users, business users, 
or let's say maybe more tech savvy business users, they are then able to build their own um, mashups that are specific to their needs that they have in, in their current role or in the enterprise. So the mashups are deployed and are in the middle between the end users and the IT and benefit both sides. So on here on, on the top right part, a uh, quote that was also last year, beginning of last year, saying that enterprise mashups will move from a few one-off pilots to true enterprise class software. And just while preparing for this talk, um, I found this information that just came out a few days ago. And it says that by now, 33% of companies um, use enterprise mashups. So what you saw on the former slide, what somebody said at the beginning of 2008, that they will move from a few um, one-offs to more enterprise-style application. It really became true. One other point that I find really interesting, you may have observed this as well, is when you have a hype, and I certainly think the hype of, of mashups was maybe in 2007, um, maybe still a bit in 2008, but then you re reach the highest point of some hype and then something new comes and I think now the new thing is um, certainly cloud computing. But an interesting part is also when you reach the hype and it maybe goes even a bit down, you don't hear so much about it, then people really start implementing stuff on it and taking this idea or this new thing and say, let's do something with it. And this is exactly what we are seeing around mashups. So we have a lot of customers that come in and say, okay, we heard about mashups now for a while. We think they could be a good fit for us. Can you help us to um, deploy mashups or can, can you show us how we could use mashups in certain situations in the enterprise as well? And here you see also um, some numbers. I, I think they are, they are quite big. So currently, apparently, the, the um, market for mashups is around 161 million in 2008. And they predict um, that it will tenfold to 1.74 billion by, by 2013. This slide I put it in to say why, why are businesses interested in, in mashups? And the key point to take away from this slide is here on the bottom. To achieve agility while reducing cost, I needs to IT needs to enable more people to help themselves. I think this was also reflected in this little graph that I showed two slides ago that you had IT on one side and end users on the, one, on the other side. And then mashups are in the middle trying to help both sides to get things done faster. So IT would enable core pieces, would enable the mashup platform and some of the data that is needed um, to build good and interesting mashups. And then business end users could create their own application, basically like you would create your own um, iGoogle page or how would, how would you could create your own, own Yahoo pipe, filtering out only the information that, that you want. And why is this the case? Why do um, a lot of companies think they, they need to be more agile? The fact is that 63% of an IT budget is usually spent on um, current um, infrastructure and keeping the current business running. So there's not so much um, money left to um, innovate and create new stuff. And with mashups, the idea is that this will help to enable more end users to help themselves and, and innovate. Any questions so far? Okay, moving on. So if you look at an, um, at an enterprise, you usually have, um, depends how you look at it, but it's this view, you have three kinds of application. So what you see on the left-hand side is, um, so as a bread and butter applications. So you have a small set of, of applications, so a small set of applications, what is shown here is a number of applications that are used by a lot of people in the company. And these are usually the, the strategic, the core business applications that, that the business really runs on. Then so as a second part, you have um, some more line of business, the, the department um, applications, and they are, crucial to the business, but more um, to a line of business um, focused. And you have not so many applications anymore, and you also don't have so many users. And the long tail of this graph is the sweet um, spot of, of mashups. This is where you have um, the tactical, the opportunistic applications, where you have not so many 
people that benefit from these applications, but you have a lot of applications that would help um, people in their day-to-day -day business. And most of the time, um, the IT department, out of the resource constraint and budget constraint, they would not have time to implement um, this um, set of applications. And this is where really the sweet spot of mashups is that, as I said before, you enable end users, business users to help themselves and create applications that are specific for their need. So what is a good mashup made of? The key point for me is good, interesting data. For me, always when I think of what can I do for a customer when they come in, it's always, my first problem is always, what kind of data are they using, or what kind of data can I present to create an interesting mashup? And so the second part is you need to have a slick, easy to use, good looking way to present this data. So, the next two slides will focus exactly on, on these two components. First, good, interesting data, and then the presentation layer. So, Mashable content needs to come from diverse feeds. This is where mashups really can help. They help you to get data out of different sources, out of different data silos, and then mash them up. So here, a couple of examples are, they can come out of applications like Lotus Domino. They can come from the web. On the web, as you know, there are a lot of RSS and Atom feeds that contain a lot of information. The government more and more puts information um, out on, on the web. Some data I have recently played around with is the census data. Everybody can get it, where you can go in and see in which county how many people live and what is the income. And we use this in, in a quite a few examples to, to create in, interesting mashups. Amazon has on their cloud offering um, a nice thing where they allow to publish um, data sets. So everybody can go out and if they if there are interesting data sets out of some science projects or so, they can be published there, and so you can consume them. Kapow is a company um, that does information extractions out of web pages. So they basically claim that with their technology, with their software, the whole web becomes an API, so you can screen scrape data from, from certain web pages. Uh, publicly available and free offer would be Dapper, dapper.org. And with Stepper, you can do the same thing. You can get um, data from different web pages and can scrape it and then use it in, in your mashup. For sure, we have news. For the enterprises, important uh, uh, is that you can tap into data that they have, like out of ERP system, content management system, customer relationship um, data, data out of SAP, or then more traditional enterprise data like um, databases. DB2, Oracle, um, MySQL, or IMS, and Cognos. But here also, enable the end user to mash up data that resides on their desktops. Not just data that comes from, from the enterprise backends, all the data that is on your desktop in an Excel spreadsheet or maybe in a, in a small um, access database. So mashups need interesting good data. Here a few more examples that we support. And then what you do with this data, you mash, mash it up, and this is a screenshot from a mashup. You take different sources, you transform these sources, pick the information that you need out of these data sources, and then you combine them and publish them, and then you have a new data feed that creates new insights that you cannot find just out of one um, data source. This is a presentation part. So what you do afterwards, first you, you collect your data that, that you need, that you want to, to present in a mashup in your quick app, and then you take different widgets, maybe we talk about widgets, and then assemble them on a page so that you get something um, that looks like, like this here with some input fields and then some more table format like a data viewer, and then you plot certain information maybe on a map. And we'll see quite a few of these examples later on. The architecture of mashups. So while working on, on a lot of mashups, what we see over and over are this, excuse me, are these three layers or what we call since the architecture of mashups. Then on the bottom you have the data layer. We've talked about this quite a bit already. 
then in the middle you have the logic that you take this data and you transform it, you mash it up, and you do something with it, and then on top you, you present this data. And here a quick example would be, let's imagine you, you are in, a <coughs> in an insurance company and you take, take your um, Microsoft Excel spreadsheet with insurance policies and merge it with some feed from the National Weather Service so that it's publicly available and um, add some data to it from, from an enterprise database. And then on the top, on the presentation layer, you display all this information that you gathered and you display it in a map, you show some customer information in, in, a, in a data viewer, in a table viewer. And you maybe can even show some trouble tickets or, or some claims that certain customers um, have issued. And um, you could even integrate some, some recent news in, into your mashup. And what this architecture allows you is to unlock enterprise data, combine it with web, personal, and departmental information. Then you can transform this information, mix this information, create new value-added data feeds. And then you assemble it on the screen in your mashups. And another key point that comes in, I think, from the whole web to o notion is that after you created a mashup like this one here on the right-hand side, you save it, you publish it, and you can share it with your coworkers. So this means after you create a mashup, it's not done yet. You, you, you publish it, and somebody else who finds it cool looks at it and says, okay, that's really cool, but I would need something slightly different. And then they maybe would remove one of these widgets here and say, okay, this information here is not really interesting for me. I just delete it. I create a new data feed and then bring in a new widget that shows this information that's more relevant for me. Make sense so far? Yeah, I see some nodding. Good. Okay. So <clears throat> all of the examples that I will show you in a bit of mashups that are done in an enterprise, and they are actually real examples that are either done directly with customers or that we have done to present to customers, are done with IBM Mashup Center. So I just want to give you only one slide about the high-level architecture of IBM Mashup Center, and I think this will help later on um, to understand um, all the mashups examples. So here on the right-hand side, we have the data mashup builder. And this is basically where you unlock your data. So you, you have what you see here, you have a couple of options of resources where you can tap into. I mentioned quite a few before, like let's say databases or an IMS system um, that handles like most of the ITM, ATM transactions are actually still handled via, via IMS and IMS transactions. Or some SAP system or your Excel spreadsheet that is on your desktop. You import it basically, you upload it, you feedify it. We talk often of, of feedifying it because after you do this step, you have a feed. So all the data becomes a feed. And this is a key enabler that you then can do what is shown quickly on the um, top right, that you then can mash up this data because all the data becomes XML and is a feed since they're in a common format and then you can mash them up. And here's a screenshot, it's the third part that the data, data mashup builder does. It's basically a catalog that allows you to share feeds that you created and allows you to create mashups, complete mashup pages, or just a widget. If you find a cool widget and you upload it or you even write your own new widget, then you can store it also in this catalog and everybody um, in your company can, can see it and maybe enhance it. For sure, security is always in the enterprise um, a, a big concern, so there are certain constraints that you can make. You can only share it with certain groups or only with certain people and give specific rights to the data. I'm just wondering off the top of your head, uh, for XML format, can you um, keep image data in an XML file, if your knowledge is correct? So you could keep it as, as a binary data, right? The second component is the mashup builder. This takes now care of the presentation layer. So you have now your data, and then here you track different widgets on the canvas, link them up to certain feeds that you create, maybe even via different widgets to each other. So then when you click on something here, or here when you click on a person, then you would see detailed information about this person here. All this is done um, by wiring on, on the presentation layer. And yeah, you can add multiple widgets. For both components, 
and I haven't mentioned this, I think it's important to keep in mind, so there is no coding at all involved. It's all drag and drop, right? So it's really targeted for more the business user, not for the IT user. For sure, I think on the beginning, always what we see, IT gets involved and helps, but after it's out, then the business user is able to change or create their own mashups that are specific for their need. So with everything you see here, it's just drag and drop and no coding at all involved. Where coding would be involved is then with another component that we have, the Lotus Widget Factory. This one allows you to create new widgets. In case we have quite a few out of the box widgets that you can use here. We, for example, can tap into Google Gadgets. So all of the Google Gadgets that you find, um, you could use in, in an enterprise mashup as well and could wire data to it or out of it. But in case there are more widgets that you need, then you could build them on your own. Let's go through this a bit faster. It's basically the same thing, again, mapped to the three layers um, that I presented before. So here on the bottom, you have all your data that comes out of, out of enterprise sources, out of web sources, or out of your databases. In the middle, in the logic layer, you, you enable this data so that you can mash them up. You mash them up, then you store this data in a catalog so that others can use it, and so on top, you create a presentation out of it, a, a mashup, a presentation mashup, so that you can see all the information. Let's move on to the mashup showcase. I think now in, in the next part, in the next slide, I think it will become really clear what I now just talked in theory about with the different parts and how it's applied in, in practice with, with customers. And here I kept on the left-hand side the, the architectural, the three layers and fill it now in, in with, with different information. So a first thing, it's a mashup that, that we did internally. And as you can imagine, at IBM, people travel quite a bit. And what we have inside is a web service that um, gives you all the locations where IBM offices, IBM buildings, or IBM labs are. We have another service that gives you the recommended hotels. So IBM has a list of hotels that you should prefer stay into because they are approved and they're in the budget and all this stuff. And IBM has also um, currently a deal um, with Hertz with all the rental car arrangements. So all this data exists internally as a web service. You could tap into them differently and there are tools that help you to, to find all um, the sites or also recommended hotels. But what we did is we, we took this three different data sources, the three different web services, and created a data mashup where we took all the three sources, we transformed it, we picked only the data that we wanted, we put it in a format that we needed it in to publish it later to one of our widgets, then we combined this data and we published it. And then on the presentation part, what we ended up with is having um, a mashup where you can enter, I think I'll show this on the next, Where you, it's, where you can enter um, a city and then you see all the information from, from the three sources on, on a map. So here again, this is uh, the data mashup. What you see here on the left hand side, these are also operators we have. You basically just click on them, you drag them over, and then you have this little novels here and you, you wire them up and then you would see the data that comes in here from a feed, in this case from a web service, you would see it flying in here. And in the transform, you would be able um, to pick the data that you want. And then just putting all these three transformations and in a combined operator, it would automatically take all the information that these three feeds basically spit out and would make one feed out of it, and then you can publish it. On the publish one, you had, have some different options, like you want to publish as, as Atom, as RSS, or, or as um, XML. So here's IBM sites, um, recommended hotels, and, and rental cars. And this is the mashup that, that we created. And at the end, you enter um, a city, you enter a country, and then you would see um, the three locations here that are in, in South San Jose. That's the one that I'm working in, and the Almadin Research Lab, and um, one in North San Jose. And you would see the Hertz location and also um, approved um, hotels close by. 
This one is a really interesting one, an airport search mashups. This was actually done in cooperation with Boeing. And what they wanted um, to use mashups for is, in the case of an emergency, they want to know, um, they know which airplanes are currently in the air, and they want to know the airports that are available, that are open, and also airports that can handle a certain type of aircraft, depending on the, on the runway length. So here again, what I said before a couple of times, every good mashup starts out with interesting data. So what we did here is we had an airport listing out of a DB2 database. In another database, we had um, the runway details. So length of the runway, what kind of airplanes it, it can um, handle, and further details. Then we took some um, information that is publicly available on the web, flight aware that gives you the current traffic, in, in a, air traffic in a certain region. And we also used a web service that's publicly available called geonames.org. And what it does, it actually takes the location of an airport, maybe a zip code or an address, and then gives you a longitude and latitude that then allows us to plot it on a map. So we took this information, we mashed it up, and what we ended up with is this mashup. Here again, the data mashup. Here I took, so <clears throat> before it's the first example, we only had one data mashup. But what you can see here, we have multiple um, sources. So we can have multiple data mashups that at the end ends and up on the presentation layer in, in a real mashup. So here I show you one of the mashups that we used, uh, one of the data mashups that we used in this mashup. And this one takes the airport locations out of a database, transforms it, picks only the information that it needs, gets a web service, calls a web service in this for each, so for all the airports that are returned here, and takes some information out of this field, out of this feed, calls this um, geodata web service, gets the information out of this service, and puts it all in one feed, then we did an additional transformation to make it nicer to use, and then we published it. And this feed is basically used so when you type in um, a city here on top, then it would show you all the airports that are in San Jose and would take like from the, the airport information out. You see here, this is the airport list here for San Jose. It returned multiple um, airports. Then with the runway details, you saw it before. So it was another um, database that, that we used in this mashup. So when you click here on a specific mashup, it would show you down here um, the information about the runway and then the conclusion which airplanes can, can land in this airport. And here on the map, also really interactive, you see green means it, it's open, or it would be okay for this um, specific airplane to land, or an orange means it, it's maybe closed, or it, the runway wouldn't be long enough. And here on the left-hand side, you see um, the air traffic at the current um, point and how it's spread out usually um, throughout the day. Any questions? Um, in, in making the mashup, you use information from other websites. Do you have to pay like tribute to those websites? So it depends. So there are more and more um, websites or web services out there that, um, where you need a key. Some are public. For example, this is um, Geo.org. This is a public web service. You cannot hit it too often since it would swaddle you down, but it, it's publicly available. There are other companies like um, Strike Iron is one that comes just to my mind. They have a lot of web services um, that you need a key to, and then you could get um, their services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So even though inside IBM we have we have DB2 or or Informix, but uh, Mashup Center can in general handle all GDBC. Um, databases, but um, we always test with um, Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, DB2, um, and Informix. Yeah. That's also a really nice way, a good point that you brought it up, because I haven't come around so many tools that allow you in an easy way to tap into different databases, right? So here, with an end user, if IT enables it, right, you can tap into an, an Oracle database and a DB2 database and then can merge this data in a really easy way. 
right? What is often like an, a big integration problem. Here it, it's done in a nice way so that even an end user can do it. But be aware, for sure there is some um, involvement from IT here because if you allow access to a database, you need to provide password and all this stuff. And you also want to control who uses it. And you also want to make sure that somebody doesn't write a SQL query that would bring the whole database server down. So this is where IT would get involved and would provide the data in a feed, right? And then we have also a um, feed control mechanism that say, for example, okay, this data is only refreshed every 10 minutes. So if the feed gets hit 100, 500 times in half a minute, it would get the same data that is cached and would not always get to the database. The reason for doing it is that we don't want to bring the database services underneath down. Okay, another mashup here is um, that we did is executive compens um, compensation comparison. So what we, the data we took here is um, data from a financial website that's publicly available. And here we use the web scraper. I mentioned Dapper before. So that allows you basically to make out of every website an API. You go on a web page, you click, I want this information and this information. You can even have input parameters. Like let's say you want to have the stock quote for IBM or, or Intel. And they would then go to a certain web page and would scrape this information for you and give it to you in a feed. We took this as a feed input. This was already an RSS feed sent that we got. And then we took, um, the SBC filing from the Security Exchange Commission, so all the big companies, they have to um, publish what their high executives earn. And this information is published in a format that's called X XBRL. And we took all this data, we put it into a database as um, XML data. And then we combined this data um, in a mashup and then presented it um, in a presentation layer with showing the different companies and a graph how um, companies in the same sector compare. So here, again, a closer look at the data mashup. So here you would have the XBL data from, from the Security Exchange Commission. Again, we did some transformation. We picked an, um, a company name, got some further information from a feed um, so it scraped some information from a website, transformed it again, and then published it. And then we used it in this mashup, where you see here on top, um, you can select different companies that we got out of this um, data from the Security Exchange Commission. Here we would show um, the data that we got some out of a database, out of an XML column, like who is the president, how much does he own, what was his salary, uh, how much does he earn, what was his salary, what was his bonus. You would see um, the CEO and, and all the other folks in this company. And on the right side, this is what we got from, from this other website that we scraped. You would see um, information how other companies um, and their executives do in comparison. This MASH bank example was done with, with a real bank. And that's a typical scenario also for mashup. So a bank has always something in process to um, give out their loans. But when the whole housing downturn hit, since they wanted to have something more. So they didn't, they wanted something in addition to their bread and butter application that handles um, their loan. So what we did here for them was a mashup that allowed them to search for um, a customer. Then it would show the customer information. And if they are multiple with, with the same name, it, it would show them. When you select on a customer, it would go to a different database and would um, show their accounts. Well, if they had accounts with the bank, what is the balance on this accounts? And it would show the loan applications, and it would show also a sample of the, of the credit card report. Again, here, as you can see quite well, is information out of different sources presented in a nice way on one screen, all done by tracking and dropping. And here on the map, what we showed was um, the blue icon shows where, where the customer lives, the little green boxes show where, where a bank location is, and the other icons show um, the loan default risk in this area. So if the loan default risk is quite high, then it would show a, a, a red um, icon. If it's medium, it would show a yellow icon. And if it's okay, then it would show a green icon. So it gave the, the clerk who was working on this customer quite a good um, overview how the area is where, 
where um, the customer wants to buy a new house. Here yeah, is a simpler um, mashup, but I still find it interesting. So we took a news feed from Reuters, and as you can see here, they always show the city posted in front for all their news. And just with this information, we could take um, the, the basically the first part of a news, could then use a web service that would give us longitude or latitude for this city or maybe just even a zip code, and then we use this information and plotted it on a, on a map. Right? So something you couldn't do easily without any tools, and here with a mashup tool, we were able to just take a normal news feed, extract some data out that we wanted, and then plot it on the map. And then also with some nice effects that when you click on one of the icons, then you would see um, the news article popping up. Okay, some more examples. This is one that we use internally for our um, defect management. So as in our team, we are using Bugzilla. And don't look so close at the defect numbers here. But what it shows you basically are the different components um, of our product. Then it shows you, um, I hide this 102, um, how many defects this certain component has. And then it shows you who has opened most of the defects and who got assigned most of the defects. And as you can see easily here, this poor fellow here, he should really get some help because this slacker here only has maybe one or two defects and he got a lot of defects. So what we show, wanted to show here, and a lot of people in our team are actually using it, you have with Bugzilla quite a few nice views on your defect. But sometimes managers or, or team members want a specific view on this data. So with this mashup, what we could do is we could create a few that was important to us and that we thought that could help others and create it without doing any coding. Just with taking the information um, that we got out of Bugzilla as a feed, Bugzilla op um, allows, allows you to, to get the information about defects and components um, in a feed in, in XML format. And then we could transform it with, with a data mashup. I showed you several examples before. And then um, plot it on, on this mashup. And then we got kind of excited, and since um, a lot of people liked it, we said, okay, let's bring, bring it a, um, a step further. What we did then, we, we took the Bugzilla uh, data, and we used the data feed from our um, source code repository, and we mashed both of them up. We transformed it. We picked the data set we wanted, and then we combined it. And what we were able then to show at the end is when the code check-in happens, does the amount of defects go up? So meaning how good is the code that people check in? And you can see here it is, yeah, stable. Another mashup that it's now internally used by, by some of our um, level two teams is, they often have the problem when a customer calls in and say, okay, I have product X, Y, and Z. And then they can, now our level two team can just type in the product um, name and then they see all the versions that are out. And when the customer says, okay, I'm on version 8.2, then they would click on it and they would see um, the GA, the announcement letter of this product. And if available, they would also see um, the end of service announcement. So if a product um, was announced that it goes in, uh, out of service at a certain point, then they would see it here right away and could inform a customer. And for sure, we had this data um, available before on different websites, but it was not well presented as we could do here. So here what I showed, some data from, for this mashup came out of an Excel spreadsheet. Then we did some filtering here. What actually happened here on this filter was um, the, name of the, um, the name of the product then a transform where we, where we would create the URL for the GA announcement and for the end of service announcement. As I said, there were websites that allowed you to type in the name, but here we did it automatically, that we generated this URL so that we could use it right away in a mashup so that you don't need to go to two different um, web pages and type in, in the information. Then we organized the feed output and then we published it. The so last one is more a fun 
um, mashup. And this was actually done quite early. It's a baseball mashup. So what you see here is we have the teams on the left hand side. Then it would figure out with, with some data from the web um, where the team is playing. It would show the current um, weather information at, at the location and it would show um, the stadium. And I saw this mesh, I'm saying, hey, that's cool, that's neat. But then I said, I would really like to know if there is a game going on maybe and would really like to know what, what's, the, what's the score is of the game. And then I said, let's mesh ups, you know, we should be able to, to find something. So then I started searching on the web and guess what? Within like asking our friends at Google, within maybe 10 minutes or so, I found um, this ESPN widget center. And guess what? They had an MLB scoreboard here and said, perfect, that's what I want to have on my mashup. When I click on the team, then it should show me if this team is currently playing and what's the current standing of the game is. So I said, okay, so it's not IBM, right? It's publicly available. Let me see how I can get it into our product. So I clicked on this add now button and then I saw this switch and I said, oh, cool, no game today, not good, but yeah, sounds like this is what I want. Then I saw this add this button. I clicked on it and I said, okay, fine, I understand. They have something for Google Gadgets, they have something for Facebook, they have something for MySpace, understandable since they don't have IBM Mashup Center, but they had this nice button embedded. So I clicked on the embedded button, I got this little um, script tag here, I copy and pasted it, went into our mashup, made some space, removed the map, opened up our tools folder and we have an, an HTML markup um, widget. So I just dragged this widget down, saved it, saved the, the snippet of code that I got from the ESPN widget center page, um, pasted it in here, said save here, and guess what? Within five minutes I had a scoreboard on my mashup page. So I think this is a nice summary where you really can see the power of mashups, that somebody creates something, right? And you say, oh, that's neat and nice, but I want to change it a little bit. And this is what you're able to do and what an end user can do without any coding. And yeah, a few really quick um, before we go into answers and questions. If I got you excited and said you want to take a look at, at mashups, at IBM Mashup Center maybe, there is an instance on Amazon that you can just launch. I actually worked on this project as well. So you can go to Amazon, can type in um, Mashup Center or IBM Mashup Center, and then you will be able to launch your own instance and pay um, per, per hour, and it would be 10 cents per hour. Or I have some flyers here for a totally um, free offering. It's called um, IBM Greenhouse. So it's a platform where, we, uh, where IBM hosts a couple of products, and Mashup Center is one of them. And feel free to try it out. If you have questions, my, my name is, is on the little flyer and feel really free to contact me. Thank you for your time and I open it up for questions. Because it's So ones that it's easy to handle that then allowed us to mix and match data from, from different resources. Basically what is underneath is basically an X query engine uh, with X pass that then allows you to, to do all this transformation. Because then you had, because we needed one common format, right? Because if you get something out of a database and something from a web service, we needed one common format then to put it into so that we could allow you to mash it up. And XML was, was for us the best fit. One thing that we will be adding, and most likely you have heard about it, is we'll be adding more and more port support for JSON, because we, we see that JSON is quite powerful and also becomes quite popular. So we are adding um, support also, also for JSON, so that you could publish your, your data also in JSON format. Thank you. Thank you.